What's going on guys? It's Greg from East Coast Eyes, and today we have a review I'm sure you have long awaited, and that is of the Warrior Warp. So I'm going to break down a lot of the details for you guys as a precursor to this review. Uh, try and keep these as unbiased as possible. I bought this Warp in a store uh, with my own cash. No one sent it to me for free, and I've been using it extensively to really give you guys a great review since it was such a controversial product. So um, when you buy it, it's going to come in this box. It's a really nice box, I will say that for it. Uh, it's got texture all over it. It probably was not cheap. It's probably very expensive. This is made in the USA here. Open it up, and you have your Warrior Warp and uh, some molded plastic and like some uh, pamphlets and stuff like that. So the price on this is $250 for the head, which obviously comes with the pocket. So that is high. Easily the most expensive lacrosse head that's ever been made. It's crazy high. Um, and I, you know, even I had a hard time buying the product, you know, putting down that money for this just to test it out. So if you look at like a high-end stick, which could be $100 or $85, and you add, you know, maybe $30 of string materials or even $50 if someone else strings it for you, you're still only at $130, maybe $150 if you're on the high end. So this is a full $100 more than pretty much the most expensive, most elite head you could currently buy, which is a lot. So for that, I uh, better do some pretty amazing things. Uh, it's going to come in only white with only white pocket with this yellow around the sides and it comes in a low version and a mid. Uh, we had the low for a long time and I played with it for a long time then we got the mid uh, which is this one that I have here. So two pocket positions, um, one color and that's pretty much it for options. You can only buy it in stores and it's super limited availability. So when this head first launched it was a very controversial launch. A lot of people got really, really upset about the way it was marketed and about the idea itself. Um, and we kind of embraced that controversial marketing and really played into it. And a lot of people got really mad. They said, you know, this is ruining stringing. This is ruining customization. This is ruining lacrosse. Um, and you know, I don't really think about it that way. Uh, it's just a product, you know, nobody's making you buy it. If you don't want it to ruin the customization, customization of your stick, you just don't buy it. You keep using the stick that you can customize. So it didn't ruin anything. Um, you know, I think lacrosse should actually embrace innovation rather than shun it immediately, at least until you give it a chance to try, which is what I did. I uh, kind of held judgment until I got to try one out and really get one in my hands and see what it was all about. So first off, let's just look at this thing as a lacrosse head. Essentially, it's an Evo 4 with a couple differences if you're just looking at the plastic part of it. The side, pretty much exactly the same. This one's made in the USA, which is really cool. Uh, we like that a lot. Uh, they added a lot of texture all over the place. This kind of hexagon structure goes up the sides, uh, all across the scoop. And on the back of the scoop, this is fine. Makes it look high tech. The one thing I don't like is it gets really, really dirty really quick. All that texture is picking up dirt. You can see on the back where it's gloss, very clean where it's textured, very dirty. That's not a performance factor, it's just something that I personally don't like the look of. The other big addition here was lock throat. So that's the same thing they launched on the regulator. Essentially it's these fingers that go into the top of the handle and spread out to clamp the shaft so you get rid of head rattle. They've kind of marketed it on this product where you use it by itself to hold the head on. You don't even need a screw anymore, which we did, we installed it correctly. And over the course of maybe a couple weeks, the head had already slid off the shaft by about a half an inch. Um, was going to come off eventually. So you cannot use it by itself, but it does help eliminate some head rattle. So you're still going to need to put a screw through the back just like a regular head, but these fingers do help eliminate a little bit of head rattle. So as far as the plastic, it's just uh, Evo 4 with some cosmetic changes. Um, pretty simple and nothing crazy that's going to improve your performance. So for the pocket, as I mentioned, this is really where this gets different. So it comes in a low and a mid. As you can see, this pocket is permanently affixed to the head. Uh, they have mesh in the inside, Kevlar on the outside and is literally molded into the plastic. So there will be no way to unstring it. There will be no way to restring it. There will be no way to adjust your bottom string or change your sidewall pattern, uh, or, you know, do shooting strings. Once you have this, it's what it is. And if it's not working, um, that's kind of just too bad. And you can't adjust it and, and nothing can really be done to it. So uh, that has pros and cons for sure. And we'll get into that. But the mesh, you can see how these really big diamonds down in the pocket which is ideally going to hold the ball and up at the top has a smaller mesh which what is essentially kind of shooting strings stitched into it um, for some harder rows. So you know if I'm looking at this pocket and, and from using it um, one thing that I notice immediately is it's really stiff. It's super rigid, it has no give and when you catch the ball you can literally hear it's like pounding a baseball glove you know you just get like this thwack um, and the ball tends to hit the pocket and then like rattle around a little bit Whereas in most mesh sticks, you see it hits and kind of falls in the deepest spot very quickly, you're able to catch it. So I was giving up 
Uh, you don't often talk about rebounds when you're talking about a field stick. I was literally giving up rebounds while playing catch uh, just with the rebounder, which definitely do not like. That's one thing that is probably one of the biggest downfalls is the rigidity. So it's going to bounce around, um, be tough to control the ball. Another thing is the pocket's just so stiff that if you put a ball in, uh, it sort of just rattles around in there. Um, you know, it has a lot of freedom to move because the mesh isn't able to move with the ball. Um, especially with the mid, that could be a really big deal for one-handed cradling. Uh, you know, you can see here down at the bottom, even if I press it in, the ball is just not sitting in the pocket in any way, shape, or form. So if you go one-handed, uh, you know, it's very likely to just kind of dump out. So those are two big th problems with the mesh itself. And then the pocket, um, for me, was surprisingly accurate. Throwing was pretty good. I mean, it was going where I was aiming. Um, and we tested tons of people in the warehouse, and the ball was going where they were aiming. You know, we are putting them in corners, and we didn't really have a problem playing wall ball or shooting with it if we were just kind of setting our feet and going slowly into a shooting motion. They were going right where we wanted. Very accurate, very consistent. There was, every now and again, a ball, maybe uh, one or two out of 10, that would just fly out the side and hit the ceiling and go so far from where we were aiming, it was like embarrassing. Um, if that happened to me in a game, I would be pretty embarrassed. And the reason for that is, the, the hardness of the pocket, you know, the ball doesn't like shift up and set, you know, where you want it to like a normal mesh stick does. And they missed a little bit on the shape of the channel. You can see right here, it's kind of bulged out and that allows for the ball to like slide up out these sides. You really would ideally want it to just be like a little more closed down into the pocket position. So the way they molded it in, they just missed the pocket shape a little bit and it's allowing the ball to literally fly out the sides every couple time you shoot, which is a really big deal and one thing that I was probably not willing to deal with if I were to incorporate this into like my actual gameplay. Another thing you're gonna notice with the warp immediately when you pass and when you shoot, no matter how hard you're doing it, is it's gonna come out off the pocket and it's gonna hit the plastic pretty hard. I mean, it gives you a pretty hard click. Um, and so I've had people ask for that in a pocket before. They say, can you make it click off the plastic? But that's like 10% of people. And most people are not used to having it feel that click when it comes off. And me personally, I like a really smooth release where I don't really feel it come out of the pocket that much. Um, and for something that's not adjustable to give you such a preferential item and just say, you know, that's what you have, um, it's kind of polarizing. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are gonna use it and be like, I don't really care for that, but you cannot change it. So it definitely feels different when you're releasing the ball for a shot. And for a lacrosse player, you know, feel is everything. You know, the way you're feeling the ball come out of the stick is extremely important for knowing where it's gonna go. So. Personally, for me, I did not like the click. Some people liked it. Some people were like, I could live with it. Um, I didn't like it, and it's definitely not for everyone, but it's there in this stick. For the idea of the built-in pocket, I think it's a really cool idea, but it just needs geared toward like beginner sticks. You know, I wasn't feeling any performance benefit here, but the real benefit is somebody who doesn't have a great stringer in their network, someone who can't get a great pocket, they could get this right away and know that they're gonna throw accurately without having to mess with it. For someone who knows very little about lacrosse or a beginner, Something like this would be really, really cool. And the other advantage they marketed was identical backup sticks. Um, and sure, you know, I guess you could buy another mid. It would be ex exactly identical here uh, to this one. You could just switch right away. But now with the way mesh breaks in so quickly, uh, maybe five years ago that was a problem for people to break their hard mesh in to have two identical sticks. But now, you know, I could string a stick up with probably like 95% accuracy in replicating another one uh, in the exact same head and it would be broken into five minutes. So for me, that's never been something I've worried about. I always have a backup that's ready to roll without having to work at it too much. Um, but a beginner stick is really where this product would excel. And the final thing on the pocket shape is it's just a little weird. So you can see, you know, this is what the pocket shape looks like. The slope here is extremely um, high. You know, it's really going down at a very extreme slope. Um, and right here, it's very tight. And then right here, it's actually looser than it was here. So the ball kind of like gets grabbed up here and then slips and then hits the plastic. Um, so you can see this is very loose and this is even tighter than that, which is not the way you want your lacrosse stick strung. The tension should go gradually from looser to tighter as you reach the scoop. And that's why I kind of attribute that weird feeling release with the plastic. Gets caught up here, then it really slips here and ends up hitting that scoop. So they just need to readjust the tension uh, right here to make sure that this part stays a little bit tighter to get the release more smooth. Um, and the final thing I found out about this was there was three pros, MLL pros, in the Warp commercial, um, you know, that were kind of using it and, and have been talking about how good it was in some Instagram posts. And now you come to the MLL 
and all three of those guys are all using mesh sticks. You haven't seen one warp in the MLL. So for this to be marketed as an elite product with elite players, um, Warriors Pros, I thought it was a little odd that they weren't actually going to be using it on the field. So it seems like you know those are guys not willing to compromise on performance, and it seems like those guys still feel like the performance is in the traditional strong mesh sticks that they've been using, which was surprising to me. So in conclusion, uh, I really applaud Warrior for the innovation here. This is like a fantastic idea. Stringing is tough for a lot of people, um, and this was a really cool way of innovating on that product. And I know how hard it is to make a new product and create it, develop it, and bring it to market. So a lot of props to them for creating something truly new. I mean, this was exciting, this was innovative, and it was new. Um, and I think it just needs some tweaking. So for me, you know, outside of working at East Coast Eyes, if I was just a player in college, would I use this stick? I wouldn't. I just don't get the feel I do on the ball. I don't get the hold uh, that I need, and there's no way to adjust it, so there's no way I could even make it better for myself. So um, until the product improves a little bit, uh, final judgment for me is, for, especially for the price, 250 bucks, you know, I'm not seeing the performance. But the idea uh, was innovative, and it was cool. So make sure to let me know what you guys think down in the comments. would love to hear if you guys are using Warps, have tested one, and what you think of the product in general. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't, and have a great day.